Hey guys and welcome back to Vina Wonders. So today I'm going to be doing my Feb reading wrap up. Feb was a pretty good reading month for me. I didn't read as much books wise as I did in January but I'm pretty satisfied with the stuff that I did read so all's good in the neighborhood. <laughs> Let's get started. Um, the first thing that I read in Feb was The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman. This is the third book in the His Dark Material series and this is my favorite one. I have finally decided it's super duper good. I think it was the best way to conclude the series and everything about it was just amazing. Like all of the facets of the story fell into place really really nicely. I think the pace was just right. It wasn't so fast that like descriptions and sort of world building were sacrificed but at the same time it wasn't so slow that it became draggy or that it lost me also i love the love story aspect in this and how it was written i feel like in fantasy especially and especially if it's fantasy that's being written um by a man i'm not sure if this is like a mean thing to say but i don't think it is i just feel like it is sort of a thing that in most fantasy fiction written by men, the love story tends to be laid on really thick and the way that it was done in this was just perfect. Um, I think next to the Dale Moore Quartet by Diana Wine Jones, this is probably my favorite fantasy love story story arc that I have read. Oh my god. It's, it's so good and because the descriptions were so subtle and because the way that they fell in love was so gradual. I was just super invested. After that, I picked up a poetry book. This is Talik by Vertuso. <sighs> Misandel Arguelles. I always have a hard time because his nickname is Ayer and he looks like an Ayer if that makes any sense. Anyway, uh, this is a collection of poetry that explores sex or lovemaking, if you will. And I really, really enjoyed this. I think that Ayer has a real gift for kind of exploring one theme and really rolling with it. I love how he played with line cuts in this. This is written in Tagalog, so if you guys don't understand Tagalog, then I don't think you will be able to um, read this. But for those of you guys who do, even if you don't normally read work in Tagalog, I would still definitely recommend this because it's fairly easy to understand, but it's written in a way that doesn't sacrifice any of the depth of the poetry, if that makes sense. I also really like that it sort of had an overarching narrative that's always kind of a plus for me, although by no means a requirement. Uh, yeah, so I'll read you guys one of the pieces from this. This is from a series entitled Sex Video, but I'm only going to read part 5 because I think that it was the one that really stood out to me. Lihim ang inyong video. Umano pansariling gamit habang ipinagagamit ang sarili sa pagkakamit ng pansariling kasiyahan. Nakadaragdag ng libog mapanood ang sariling libog na libog. Kapwa pinanunood, manunood, na susurpresa sa kanyang gawin ng katawan na hindi nakikita sa sandaling nakikita na. Ang sarili sa video, walang hindi na ibubunyag. Walang video na hindi na ibubunyag. After that, I read something that I was just so happy to finally get my hands on and this is What Is Not Yours Is Not Yours by Helen Oyemi. This was recommended to me by my friend Destiny, so Des, if you're watching, hey and thank you for the recommendation. This short story collection is one that I was very intrigued about because I'm a huge Helen Oyemi fan. I've read most of her novels, not all, but most of her novels and I was really interested to see how she would fare in the short story medium and I think that there were a lot of stories in this that were really really good but I do feel like a lot of the other stories kind of weren't at par so I have kind of mixed feelings about this. I talked about my favorite short story in this which is called Is Your Blood As Red As This in one of my other videos which I'll just link at the end screen but um yeah, some of the stories in this that were amazing were super amazing. Some of the others weren't quite so great. And I think the reason for that is Helen Uyemi kind of has trouble shaking the novel format where everything is sort of interconnected. These stories do interconnect and some characters do overlap, but I feel like some of the stories just don't stand very well on their own. Like as individual stories, you're sort of like, why am I being told this? And that's sort of where it fell short for me but yeah it's still definitely worth reading especially if you're a Helen Oyemi fan last but not the least books wise is 
a supposedly fun thing I'll never do again by David Foster Wallace. I'm not yet finished with this. I'm around three essays in. I'm halfway through the third essay and these are super long essays. They're like 50 to 80 pages long and I really got to give David Foster Wallace props for being able to write so thoroughly in a way that's still engaging because I feel like if anyone else had written this, I would have put it down a couple hundred pages ago. But there's just something about the way that David Foster Wallace writes about experiences and the way that he describes things that is so amazing. I really enjoyed an essay in here about television and sort of the culture of watching. Again, I talked about that in my best and worst video, which I'll just sort of leave a link to. I also really enjoyed his essay about tennis because he used to be kind of a tennis protege and the way that he describes setting has always been extremely amazing to me. Um, there's a part here where he talks about sort of the landscape of rural America or like midwestern America and it's so freaking beautiful. So yeah, um, here you go. I'll read this bit from... Uh, the first essay, which is called Derivative Sport in Tornado Alley. Summers were manic and gusty, then often around August deadly calm. The wind would die some August days, and it was no relief at all. The cessation drove us nuts. Each August, we realized afresh how much the sound of wind had become a part of the soundtrack to life in Philo. The sound of wind had become for me silence. When it went away, I was left with the squeak of the blood in my head and the aural glitter of all those little eardrum hairs quivering like a drunk in withdrawal. It was months after I moved to western Massachusetts before I could really sleep in the pussified whisper of New England's wind sound. Another thing that I read this month was the 24th issue of the Adroit Journal. The Adroit Journal is a literary journal that I enjoy very, very much. I think they publish some of the best poetry out there and I'll leave a link to that below in case you guys want to read it. The 24th issue is phenomenal. And that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. What have you guys been reading this month? Please let me know. Uh, yeah, don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!